everyone welcome back to another video and in the last you know few videos we've been learning about uh, kubernetes management right and uh, so many you know uh, offerings by so many startups and companies to make it easy for developers to you know work with kubernetes without knowing the underlying complexities and we did we did a video on kubesphere so you can check it out in the devops bootcamp playlist here you can find right we, we've done uh, like a like a getting started with it and uh for for those of you who don't know you know it's an uh, it's a it's a cloud native application management tool right it's open sourced and uh you know uh you can uh you can use kubernetes you know it uses kubernetes as, as its kernel as you can see over here and you can see that it provides a plug and play architecture allowing third-party applications to be seamlessly integrated in the ecosystem so for example ci cd tools things like that right and when we're talking about the features in the previous video i'm not going to go through it uh, like obviously again because we already covered it and uh, we have a webinar coming up like on multi-tenancy so make sure you like and subscribe and uh, here you can see the key features that kubesphere has to offer right so you already know about like the basics of kubesphere if you have seen my video how to get it started how to run it in your in your cluster locally and in, in like cloud as well so one of the features is kubernetes uh, multi-cluster management right so let's see what this is all about so in the previous video we saw like we, we ran a cluster in in Sivo and if you're a Kubernetes practitioners and you know uh, working with the multiple Kubernetes clusters it's 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 like you you know you work with that uh, regularly sort of a thing right and uh, if, if you're in Sivo or like say some other cloud providers so some Kubernetes clusters you'll be having running in like your local data center for example and it's can it, it can be like a little bit overwhelming and uh, you know uh, difficult if you will to manage all these uh, you know clusters that are running one by one right so what if you can use one of the kubernetes clusters that are running right so you have multiple kubernetes clusters that are running right so what if you can use one of the clusters that is running as the central control plane to manage all the rest of the clusters so in kubernetes you have the control plane and then you have worker nodes right similarly when you have multiple clusters within themselves right so you have learned about like mini cube mini cubes run one node cluster so you have multiple clusters running right um so what you can do is take one of that cluster and make it act like a uh, act as a control plane so that will be your main cluster and then it will have many other clusters that it will be managing so kubesphere allows us to do it right so as you can see it uh, you know, allows us to do it via kubesphere federation and how multi cluster architecture works over here as you can see what i mentioned already you can have one one kubernetes cluster that will be acting as control plane and that will be known as the host cluster okay and the host cluster is you know the Kube kubesphere cluster only with multi cluster feature enabled now kunal that's fine cool how do we enable this feature what what all things you need to do and what all things you need to change and you're talking about that this cluster will manage all the rest of the clusters so we are calling those member clusters how do we know which cluster is host cluster and which cluster is member cluster i'll i'll tell you that in just a minute when we do the hands-on demo part okay one thing you have to keep in mind is on every cluster you have to have qsphere running that is not that difficult especially with the ceo uh, marketplace just one click and it will happen so we have already covered that in the previous video but as a revision i'll when i create newer clusters right now um, you will have a revision of that as well right cool so as you can see there can only be one host cluster with multiple member clusters can exist at the same time okay and you can see that it's either connected connected directly or through an agent so we are going to try it you know uh, directly this is a simple architecture as you can see over here and i'm going to show you how you can connect these directly right so here you can see that i'm in my cvo account I can go to the clusters that I have running. This one is the one that I had in the previous example, right? I can just go to the endpoint, right? And I can go to this part. Very simple. I've covered this in the previous lecture, so make sure you check it out. Now I can like log in, right? I can go to my I can my password. And we are in okay so we already explored this in like the previous section you can see that we have one cluster running if i go to platform you can go to cluster management or access control this is something we'll do in future videos um but let's go to cluster management right now so since we have this one cluster running let's call this ks co1 uh, this will be my uh you know host one and i'll create a member cluster okay i'll just name this member cluster 
I'll default everything. I'll have this as no worries. Cilium in the management, I'll add QSphere. Create cluster. Okay, I'll just show you how to add one, uh, how to create one cluster as a host and another one as member. Then you can add as many as you want as members. Remember, there can only be one host cluster. Okay. Cool. This will take like around 100 seconds or less than that, uh, you know, to, to get started with it. So what I'm going to do right now is while that member cluster is being created, let's try to make this cluster um, the host. So I can go to CRDs, custom resource definition, right? So you can see a custom resource definition, uh, a CRD extends Kubernetes by allowing users to create any kind of custom resources. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to cluster configuration. right there we have it and we're going to go to ks installer edit yaml file so now in this ks installer when you go to the you know when you scroll down around here you will find a tag called multi cluster and cluster role this basically means what do you want this cluster role to be for this particular cluster i want it to be host cluster isn't that correct okay after that i'll just click okay and there we go so now that's it literally don't have to do anything else so my host cluster is now set up and now i want this host cluster to have some member clusters associated with it that it can manage right when we talk about multi-cluster management so for that we need a jwt token okay we need a jwt token so when i go to let's say um kubectl and uh here basically we can get the JWT token. So this is the command as you can see on the screen that you have to run in order to get the JWT token. And this is the token that I have. This is going to be very important uh, when you are adding, you know, member clusters in. So it's uh, very important for that. So I'll just go to my external IP, right? You can just copy the external IP for my member address. 30880. It's not uh, loading right now because uh, it it takes a while. You know, we ran the logs as you can see. So if you can see the if you want to see the logs of uh, you know when it's uh, getting created, I can just download it. You can use the CO CLI as well. Okay, but I've just downloaded the config file because if you may not be familiar the CLI, I don't want to you know um, confuse you. But it's pretty straightforward. You can use the CS CO CLI. I can do export path not path cube uh, config. right and then i can see the logs so i can run this command and we can see what the logs are and uh, what's the status basically for the installation so you can see it's taking some time you can just zoom out a little bit so it'll take some time it will you know see it's, it's currently working so by the time this process finishes you can go to your uh, the page that was not opening before and it will it will work just fine Right, right now it's showing failed, uh, failed page. So once this particular command is done, so you can see it's waiting for all the tasks to be completed. So once that is done, this will work just fine, just like that. And we're going to use this JWT token to associate this member cluster with my host cluster. So you can associate as many like member clusters you want with one host cluster, and that particular host cluster will be managing the rest of the clusters. So it's going to make your life very easy when you work with multiple clusters, right? Right, so as you can see that this thing is done, right? And uh, when we go to the host one, the platform cluster management, now it says host cluster. Okay, and I refresh this. Should be working. Now this is my member cluster. Okay, I can log into this. modify later i'll add my password later cool my my uh token got lost i can just do it again there you go jwt token there we go i'll copy this so host cluster is set up no problem how do we set up this particular cluster as the member cluster i'll go to platform cluster management so that's what we're working with crds 
you can go to cluster configuration there we go ks installer there we go and we can edit the yaml file and uh, we need to connect this one with the host cluster for which we already have the jwt token where that token will be connecting it so we have to go to authentication for that here we go authentication you can see token secret we have just added that okay and since this is a part of the multi cluster so in multi cluster what is this host or member member multi cluster this is member and we can click on ok we may need to have to like wait a little bit to you know see this in place management so as you can see that this uh, you know the logs thing it, it sort of like restarted uh, when we were adding the member cluster so we're gonna have to wait for this to be complete right so basically what is happening is it's setting that cluster as like the the member cluster and then we would be able to add this particular one in the host cluster so if i go to cluster management i go to host i can get on add cluster i can get cluster name i can say member member cluster for example give it a tag like um it's a demo so i can give it a demo no problem i can click on wider sivo and um description is test cluster i can go to next so here i would have to add the cube config file of the target cluster if i'm using the direct connection if you're using the the agent connection then uh, you'd have to you know uh, work with that so you'll have to use an agent for that uh, via a proxy but uh, here what we're going to do is we're going to run direct connection all right so i can just copy paste like that right um this is the one that i got just from sibo you can download your cube config file from here right so here you can see the multi-cluster control plane of kubesphere connects to the member cluster through the cube config that has been provided and the host cluster must be able to directly access the member cluster through the server address in the cube config file where is the server address over here so you can make sure that this one is like accessible via the host you can add like some internal uh, internal address as well if you're using uh you know depends on like your cloud provider so as you can see the host cluster and the member cluster are in the same internal network okay so i think that looks good and i'm just going to click on create so it's created successfully that's that's good member cluster and if i go to platform cluster management there we go we have the host cluster and we have our member cluster very nice we have successfully set up uh, multi-cluster management all right so I'm just going to close the one that was you know, the, the member cluster. I'm just going to close that, right? So you may have this doubt, right? So Kunal, you have multiple clusters. Do we have to log in into like multiple accounts for QSphere? No, I can close this. And now I can manage this member cluster via the host cluster. Just click on this. Let's see if everything looks good. Um, see your provider looks good. Check, check out the cluster nodes. Two nodes looks good to me. Some components, yeah. That all seems seems to be working fine. That is correct. Pods and stuff. Looks good. Amazing. So now we are able to access it via the host. So I'm not logged into this. I'm logged into this one. Similarly, you can add other ones, but make sure you know the thing that was mentioned previously whether you know, it should be in like the same internal IP address or this one should be accessible to the host cluster, the IP address. So the server address part is important. And uh, that's pretty much about it. And now, you know, you can add as many clusters as you want. And using the member cluster, I'm managing that application workloads, projects, system components, doing all the things that were mentioned in the feature section. So this is one of the great use cases of QSphere multi-cluster management. I will um, do in the next videos, we'll see some like application-based use cases, but try it out, um, see what works for you. And um, I take a screenshot and let me know if you were able to successfully set up uh, multi-cluster management using a cloud provider like Sivo and QSphere. Uh, let, let me know on Twitter, share about it and share what you learned during the Learning Public Initiative. 
and that's pretty much about it make sure you check out the complete uh, devops playlist uh just being updated you know regularly and uh yeah write a blog about it if you want uh, share your knowledge and that's uh, i think that was a bit about this video um uh, i leave the links to all these resources in the description below for you to check out like documentation and stuff and i'll see you in the next one have a great day